There have been at least five significant animal rescues in Kentucky just in the last two months. But did you know, if the animals are not surrendered, the cost to take care of those animals falls right on you. Animal advocates believe that's the reason why hoarding cases are being overlooked. Focus investigator Heather Fontaine is digging into the cost of animal cruelty and the change that animal advocates are now pushing for. Stacked on top of each other from the floor to the ceiling. This is how dozens of dogs were hoarded at a McCracken County, Kentucky home, which became the center of an animal rescue mission in April. Immediately, it's very hard to breathe. Your eyes start burning. You look to the left, there's dogs, you know, with several inches of feces and it's sawdust in the crates. James Houchins with Guardians of Rescue says altogether they rescued more than 100 animals from the house, including 70 plus dogs, kittens, goats, pigs, and chickens. It was a very heartbreaking case that one was. The nonprofit has been a part of at least five rescues in the last two months, including a bust at this alleged puppy mill in Adair County in March. Wearing gas masks and hazmat suits, Houchins and other volunteers carried 132 dogs and nine cats out of the home. He's coming. In certain areas, they had to lift them over the rusted shut cages to get them out. They believe dozens of dogs died inside these kennels. You would clear a cage out that had, you know, 14, 15 dogs in it, and you would move a dog house and you would find skeletal remains. The Adair County Sheriff's Office charged Deborah Remmers with 141 counts of second degree animal cruelty. Animal lives matter. Which led to a group of animal advocates rallying outside the courthouse during her arraignment. That is definitely the kind of momentum we need. Michelle Lawson is the founder and president of Kentucky Animal Action and fears these cases only represent a fraction of the abuse in the common we lose a lot of sleep worried about the cases that aren't being busted and the animals that are still sitting there waiting for someone to come rescue them. She believes the expense of animal cruelty cases is part of what keeps them from being frequently pursued. The cost can be very large very quick and that's something that a lot of counties can't incur on their own. In Kentucky, if a person does not surrender their animals, the cost to board them, feed them and provide medical care falls on the taxpayer. When there's a large case, unfortunately, sometimes counties have to look the other way because they could be looking at a hundred, two hundred thousand um, dollar bill to hang on to these animals during a court case. It's why Kentucky Animal Action is working on a cost of care bill, which would put that expense on the accused offender. The person being charged either has to pay a decided amount of money to care for those animals while they're in care during the case, or if they can't or won't pay that fee, they have to forfeit the animals where the animals can move on to rescue or adopters immediately and there's not a cost of care for the animals incurred during the court case. Lawson has worked closely alongside Joy Keeley, a former Louisville Metro police officer who has dedicated her retirement to exposing the link between animal abuse and abuse towards people. In 2018, for example, the number one crime associated with animal abuse was endangering the welfare of a minor. Last fall, Keeley was a contributor to the University of Louisville Brandeis School of Law's Journal of Animal and Environmental Law and cited a study that said 82% of defendants in animal abuse cases had also committed other crimes like intimate partner abuse, assault, and child or elder abuse. We need lawmakers to quit looking at the species of the victim and start looking at uh, the abusive nature of the perpetrator because it's that abusive nature which will abuse more than one species at a time. Her research also revealed that in 2018 and 2019, 6% of the animal cruelty cases were hoarding cases in Kentucky, but 58% of the animals abused in those two years were involved in those hoarding cases. Hoarding cases do not make up the majority of neglect cases, but it means that these are a phenomenal amount of animals involved in these 5%. Though she says oftentimes a hoarder is in denial of their inability to provide for these animals. There's a persistence despite this failure in accumulating and controlling animals and that is part of the mental illness. Kentucky is still ranked one of the worst states for animal protection laws. Healy believes passing the Cost of Care Act would help. It will give animal control and law enforcement more tools 
to um, save these animals and possibly humans, and it will give them more the wherewithal to say, okay, I'm here for these animals, but let me find out what's going on inside if I can. It wasn't heard on the floor of the Kentucky Congress this year, but it has garnered support from lawmakers like Kentucky Representative Kim Banta, who said in a statement to Focus, it protects against huge bills to taxpayers, as well as animals, which I support wholeheartedly. Things are changing. It might be slow, but I feel like the momentum is picking up and it's going to happen. <laughs> In the case out of McCracken County, Kentucky, David Howery was charged with 25 counts of cruelty to animals in the second degree. His criminal history revealed an outstanding bench warrant from a previous cruelty to animals conviction in Adair County back in 2009. Court records say he pled guilty to more than 100 counts and was sentenced to 12 months in jail. He served 60 days. Houchins says that's not uncommon in cases like this. They basically get a slap on the wrist and then, you know, just months down the road, um, they're right back at it, you know, hoarding dogs, breeding dogs, selling dogs. These animal advocates are anxious for tougher laws and more accountability and hope exposing living conditions like this will rally the support necessary. There are a lot of people like me who aren't going to give up and we're not going to stop trying to make the world a better place for animals in Kentucky. If you're thinking about buying a dog from a breeder, you should always ask to see the puppy's parents and the living conditions in person. If a breeder says no, that's a red flag. You can report suspected puppy mills to your local law enforcement, and you can always reach out to the Guardians of Rescue to do some digging. For Focus, I'm Heather Fontaine. If you have a Focus story that you'd like our team to investigate, send them an email about it to focus at whas11.com.